Gary, a bit harsh this afternoon? I definitely think 4 1 was a harsh scoring. You know, the players for 60 minutes matched Aberdeen. You know, they got a, the first goal and we scored the fantastic goals ourselves to equalise. And probably just that spell for just for when we scored for about 15 minutes after, it's probably where we lost the game today. You know, Aberdeen scored two or three goals in a quick succession, albeit I've just watched it back and it's never a penalty, you know. It wouldn't have made a difference to the to the end result, I don't think. But when it goes for 3-1 to 4-1, it's easy for our players' heads to drop and that could have ended up five or six. However, they stuck at it, defended well to the end and uh, still had another chance through London to get another goal back herself. So you've got to give the players credit. I think there's more positives than negatives to take out. But we're trying to get a belief into the club and into the fans and that that we'll never be happy getting beat, you know. But then sometimes you've got to look at we're playing against the team that's been the second best team in the country for the last two or three seasons and for 60 minutes we've matched them. Whether that was an effect to them playing on Wednesday night, I've no idea. We can only look after ourselves. I felt quite comfortable even when they scored their first goal. We came back into the game, got an equaliser, I was feeling quite comfortable, however... From our point of view, second goal, we're saying that we've got blocked, that can not happen. Third goal, we've no stopped across. Penalty is never a penalty. First goal, Barry Maguire slips. Kai makes a great tackle and it falls to McGinn, that's just unlucky. So, I think every decision that went against us today led to a goal. And sometimes when you're playing against the big teams and the better teams, that's what happens. So, we need to learn from it, dust ourselves down, and we need to just concentrate on the, on the remaining league games now. And Niall McGinn coming off the bench at half time kind of yeah, really made and the difference. That, that did make the difference. Also, Derek deserves credit for that. I think he scored one and set up two or three. And so you've got to give Niall credit. Um, he's a good player. I've played with him, top player. And uh, probably took his frustration out of no starting in recent weeks out on us. And he put in a really good half that probably turned the game in Aberdeen's favour. Did Queens give him too much space to get the crosses He's on? a very good player, you know. As I say, I've played against him and tried to mark him myself. He's a top player at going past people, so at any time a cross comes in, you've obviously got to say you could stop the cross. You know, we had Michael and Scott out there for the third goal and they never managed to stop it. But as I say, I've been in that position myself where sometimes a good player with a bully like that can just do things that you're not expecting. And You know, the, the play, you've got to remember, you know, if you just look at that, you've got Scott Mercer, who was at East Fife for a couple of seasons ago playing against Niall McGinn who's a Northern Ireland international that's been at the World Cup so it's a big learning curve for our players you know and in the main we acquitted ourselves well we've done the club, club proud I was proud of them as a manager and as I say now we need to refocus and go in the league we've lost two, our last two league games we certainly don't want to make it three in a row against Dundee United Aberdeen had a lot of the ball to start with but they didn't really no, get but, created much and you know we never actually set up defensively we never said sit back or that it's just the way the game panned out you know we played a normal team Normal formation, that was a team that played against Dundee, we never told them to sit back or anything. And you're right, Aberdeen had a lot of the ball, but we were frustrating them. If you want to be really critical, we're five minutes into the second half and we've lost a goal. That gives Aberdeen a lift, see if you get through 15, 20 minutes of that second half. You start becoming a wee bit edgy and then you maybe get a bit of brilliance like Stevens, and you never know it's going to be your day. However, we lost a goal at a bad time and then the 15 minutes after we equalised sort of killed the game for us. But that's football, you know, you, we need to learn from it and move on. Did you say another piece of brilliance from Stephen Dolan? Great, him and Lyndon, you know, uh, great we link up play and then Stephen, you know, he just hit it and he sort of knew it was going in before it hit the net. Fantastic goal and uh, a real shame that it didn't really mean anything at the end of the day. Jordan as well in the first half had a, a fantastic a fantastic strike and as I say, when you're playing against teams like Aberdeen that have got a lot of the ball, you're going, sometimes you need something, a bit of brilliance and we nearly had it and as I say, that was a strike out of nothing. Stevens was, we had the one with Lyndon there. And that's like with a wee bit of play when we made it one all, where you actually start thinking, you know, this could maybe be our day. However, you know, I'm not wanting to be too critical with the players, but we need to do better at the second and third goal. But the 4 1 scoreline is a bit harsh. It's harsh, no, it definitely wasn't a 4 1 game, you know, and never in a, never in a monthly Sunday should that have finished 4 1. And that's where I feel for the players a wee bit. 2-1, possibly 3-1, yes. Did Aberdeen deserve to win the game? Yeah, probably for the second half performance. Did it deserve to be 4-1? No chance. As you say, it's now focusing on that league, a, a big, another big game against Dundee United. Yeah, and it is, and I went to watch them yesterday. They played well. They were a, a good bit better than St Mirren in the first half, and then St Mirren caused them a few problems in the second half. So we need to, we need to get just get the players back on track, really. You know, for uh, we're, we're starting to get the squad back. Nicky obviously today hasn't trained much so 
that was the reason we took him off. The game was sort of away for us at 3-1. We want to try and give him every chance possible to make Dundee United. Josh will be touch and go for Dundee United. Obviously, Buggy and Wilson will come back in. Fraser Air then again can't play next week. So, um, hopefully we'll have a few more options for next week. A little bit of concern over Michael? No, he just ahead. took cramp. You know, if you, if you actually watch Michael and put a player camera on the last 10 minutes, he ran 60 yards up, 60 yards back. Five minutes later, 60 yards up, 60 yards back. And again, he's only had one training session, really. No, Michael, I thought Michael's, I thought he gave us exactly what we needed in that first half. He was, he was having a good battle with the lad low. Um, sometimes not always easy on the eye, Michael, but very effective. And he should be pleased with his day's work. United, just back to that United game. It is at home for a change. Not in many home no, games. We've, no, you know, it'll be good to get back. We've got quite a decent home record this season, so we want to try and build that. It'll be a tough game. You know, I looked at their bench yesterday. They've got, you know... For me, the strongest squad in the league. They had uh, Gomez, Fivey, um, Osman So, the lad Nisbet. People like Sam Stanton never even made their 18. So it shows you how strong a squad Robbie's built. But, you know, we can only look after ourselves. I'm happy with the squad that we've got when everybody's fit. I expect us to give Dundee United a really good game. And I'm looking to get a positive result.